What is up guys? It is Tony here and today we are doing a Barrow's Guide for RuneScape 2007. Uh, this is a very irrelevant guide and what I mean by that is that not a lot of people do Barrow's anymore um, as often as they used to. But I still think it's something that a lot of people should consider doing for money making. It's a good way to, if you're a PVMer or if you're a PKer, it's a good way just to get some money into your bank when none of your friends are on, you can't duo bandos, you can't, um, you know, do any sort of serious PVM. This is a good way just to do some solo money making. And I've actually made about 50 to 100 mil, it's in that range, I'm not really sure exactly what it is, from Barrows over time. And I really think that it's something that a lot of people should consider doing. So, my guide is going to be more for higher levels, unfortunately. If you're a lower level, um, I'd recommend basically just doing the same thing without the Guffins or the Dragonfire Shield. Uh, but you should get a Trident or you should use a Slayer Staff. You should use a Whip and a DDS if possible. Um, I'm actually not, I'm not even holding my DDS, what am I doing? So uh, yeah, this is just going to be a general guide on how to do Barrows. Uh, basically, my method, my methodology, how I navigate the caves, how I do everything. Um, it's more about the actual um, method of going through the Barrows minigame and getting there as well. So uh, for those who don't know, Barrows is a minigame where you can get this armor right here and lots of other really cool Barrows armor that's worth a lot of money. I mean, if you get a spear, that's worth like six, seven mil. And if you get something that's not as good, like a chain skirt or a Guffin's body, you're still talking about, you know, a half a mil or so in your bank. And then the runes that you get, you can sell the blood runes and keep the mines, the deaths, and things like that to recharge your trident or use towards your spells. And the bloods pretty much pay for your prayer potions. So all around, it's a pretty profitable experience. You never really lose money. It's not a risk at all. But let's go ahead and get into it. So there's two ways you can get to Barrows. A uh, common method a lot of people are using now, if they have Shades of Morton done, is they go to the Shades of Morton minigame room and then they teleport Shades of Morton. Now, if you don't, if you haven't done that, um, which I'm guessing you have, if you um, are able to do this, my method is just to go to teleport to house. And the reason why I prefer this method over Shades of Morton is because when I get to my house, I am able to. Um, prayer. I'm able to use prayer uh, at my altar and recharge my prayer at the end of each trip. But uh, then I go down here and I have a Carol teleport or Kirill teleport which is for getting to Canifis. So now once I'm at Canifis, just go around here. Most of you guys have probably seen this before. Um, but if you don't have this a method or ability, um, the best method is just to do the quest that gets you the Ecto file. Um, because that'll allow you to teleport pretty close to Canifis. You can just walk down here. Um, but I would recommend either doing Shades of Morton, which is probably the fastest method, um, or doing this method, which is pretty pretty annoying, the amount of quests you have to do to get this whole method done. So Shades of Morton is probably the best method. So uh, now, you know, this is the route. I just want to show everyone the route of how to get here, because some people don't know how. Um, just cross the bridge. And some people bring super energies. I don't bring super energies. Um, I do sometimes, but, you know, you run out of energy right at the end of this trip. So it might be worth bringing. I don't know. That's up to you. But I like to save my super energies for other things. So you board the boats, and you will be right near the Barrows Arena. So... We're going to go ahead and show you the uh, the order of Barrows Brothers that I do. So we are now at Barrows, and what we're going to do really quickly is show you the order in which I do Barrows. I'm going to explain briefly why I do it this way. Um, everyone has their own method, but I think this method is pretty efficient in terms of saving prayer and maximizing the amount of chests you get to go to. Um, it, it really only works if you have high level armor that actually gives you massive defense bonuses like this because you're going to need to tank a bit. But what I do is I go to Darox first. And at Darox, you can use um, all of your prayer you have originally. And then you'll usually have some left over. And you can come over here and then you kill Arums right in the center here. And then after you kill Arums, you can go down to Carols, use any remaining prayer at Carols, and then Guthans, Torags, Varix. And I tank, I usually tank all three of them. And sometimes I'll use one dose on Guffins, because Guffins can heal on you, which gets kind of annoying. Um, so let's see that in action right now. 
And uh, so the first thing we do is I'm going to set up my quick prayers to just doing melee, protect from melee. And let's go ahead and go down. So the first thing I do is I pray melee, of course, on Darox. And I use my mage spell without any mage armor. I really don't recommend bringing mage armor because uh, the two spells I mentioned that you should use, the Trident or the Slayer Staff, both rip through melee armor, um, all the melee brothers, without even having any mage bonus, as you can see. So it's not necessary, it just takes up inventory slots, and there you go. Uh, then of course we go to Arams, and now at Arams what I do, a lot of people bring Restore Potions because he, he reduces your stats, but here's my method. I just pot up with a superset, and then I run down, We'll dig down. And then I just pray mage, pray piety, and I just tear through them as quick as I can, or not, or I hit zero zeros. And I unload all of my specs on him, because I want to get him down as quick as possible so he doesn't drain any of my stats. And then, usually by the end of this, if you look at your stats, you'll see they really aren't drained that much. Um, the super set basically protects your uh, stats from going below where they normally are. And you really don't need that much of a boosted stat to kill Carol, so... I kind of consider the superset a good way to to just, you know, handle it without having to bring restores, because I don't like bringing extra potions to take up inventory space. So now, we're going to kill Carols, which same thing, just piety. And as you can see, in my situation, I have 83, 82 prayer, so it's pretty high, but I have a lot of prayer left over. I haven't had to use one dose yet, and uh, it's a pretty efficient way to get this done. And, uh, of course, this is, you know, bearing in mind that I'm a higher level, um, so in your situation it may be a little bit more difficult, but if you have Guthans, or if you have some way to heal, um, you could just bring more prayer potions and less sharks, and you could probably last here for a long time. Um, so now, as you can see, I have a little bit of prayer left over, so we're gonna use this trident on Guthans with protect, uh, protect melee. Because we have a little bit of prayer left over. But I wouldn't recommend using a dose here if you have good defense bonus or a good defense level. Because you're just going to tank through him no matter what. But he still may hit on you, which is kind of annoying. Um, because when he hits you, he heals. Usually, he'll heal. Um, and that's not really a good situation to be in. So as you can see, my prayer just dropped. And he probably won't hit through my armor at all. But of course, varying on your, dis on your situation, he may hit you. Um, Torag, same thing, he may hit you, but I don't pray on Torags either, uh, which you're going to see right now. So, let's run over to Torags, and Torags, same thing, just use Mage, and I don't pray, because I just feel like it's a waste of, uh, a waste of potions, a waste of money, really. So, after you kill Torags, of course, you go to Varix, and it looks like Varix is going to be my tunnel this time, so... A big thing you need to make sure you're doing when you're doing Barrows is make sure you keep track of which ones you've killed. Because um, it, it gets really annoying when you forget which which tunnel you have. Say, like, Darok, for some reason, uh, was your first you know your first kill, obviously. And it was so long ago that you forgot that Darok is your tunnel. You may find yourself going through each single mound trying to find where your tunnel is. So it gets kind of annoying, so try to remember that. And I'm actually going to teach you a method for uh, remembering where your ladder is when you go down into the tunnels, which is very useful because it's very easy to forget where your ladder is. So, now, speaking of that, we have Varric in the tunnel, so we can go ahead and run on down. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you my method of remembering where the ladder is, which is something that happens to a lot of people. Um, I've experienced it firsthand. Um, so, basically, I just went through the door. There's always going to be one door that you can go through out of these four. And you're going to notice that this door is a tunnel, a side tunnel. So I'm going to go over here and show you that. This tunnel over here is a side tunnel, as in it curves. You can see how it curves here. This one's going to curve too, the opposite direction, you can see that. So we are in the southwest corner of the entire map, because there's two curving tunnels that go this way, and then go that way, and then over here is our door. So we're in the southwest corner of the map. And another way you can tell if you're in the southwest corner is look at your compass and find where the chest is. So you're going to see that right here is the chest. You can see that from here. So we're in the southwest corner. Now if you ever have a tunnel, just remember which tunnel is. This is the west tunnel over here. This is the south tunnel over here. So just remember what tunnel you went through and you remember what corner your ladder was in 
and remember which direction you're going around the chest. So the chest is over here, as you can see, and we're going clockwise. So I'm going to remember I'm in the southwest corner and we're going clockwise, which means that when I'm esca escaping the tunnels after I get my loot, that I have to go counterclockwise and I need to get to the southwest corner of the Barrow's Tunnel. So this is a pretty good way to remember it. Just keep remembering in your head or write it down somewhere. Southwest, anti-clockwise. And if you remember those two things, you'll be able to get your way out. Um, I only, you know, try to create a strategy for it because it's very common that, you know, you're taking a while down here. Maybe you're going for a big kill count and you just forget. It's very common that you forget which tunnel you're in or, of course, if you screw up the puzzle. Now, I really don't recommend screwing up the puzzle because that'll mess up everything for you. So, we're going to go ahead, and usually the kill count I get is 14, but it really doesn't matter. I think as long as you're above 10, you're going to get something out of it that's decent. And there's been people who have gotten, like, 1,000 kill count and got nothing special out of it. So, I usually go for 14, 15, because I just think it's lucky. It's usually based off of something like that, which is complete BS, of course. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. So, it looks like I have to go all the way around, which is kind of a pain. But, there is my door. So now we're going to go into this door. And you should memorize the puzzles. If you don't know what they are, you can look up online what the answers are. They're pretty simple. Um, usually, the, the main puzzles are the square. The answer is the square on those shapes. The answer for the one where it's like a, a sideways horizontal line going up the square is the top, the top line. So now we're going to go ahead and kill Varix. And the one with two arrows facing into a circle, it's when the two arrows are facing inward toward the circle. So, if you look that up, you'll see what I'm talking about. Or if you've ever done barrows before. Uh, so, Varix, like I said, you know, tank him, don't use prayer. A lot of people like to pray on to Varix, but he does hit through prayer, and a lot of people seem to think that if you pray, it reduces the damage slightly, which may be true, but... Honestly, he's still going to hit you a lot. I mean, I pray on him sometimes, and he just destroys me, so I really don't see any purpose to it. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and check our loot. And we got junk. So uh, the thing about Barrows, which I'm going to explain really quickly, is that you can see I got 135 Chaos Rings, which, of course, I could use for my, um, my staff. I got these Bolt Racks. Now, Bolt Racks you could sell. So that's, pro that's money that goes towards paying for your supplies. Your mind runes, those are going to be usually used for spells if you're using a Slayer Staff. But basically any runes you're not going to be using towards your spell, uh, you can sell. And you can usually make back what you spent on supplies. So now we're going to go anti-clockwise and we're going to go to the southwest room. As my method pointed out earlier. And I recommend uh, when you're running through these tunnels just keep the highest defense gear you have on. If you have a shield, wear the shield. Uh, a lot of people will keep their Govan Spear on, which is kind of pointless. Um, some people actually try to heal while they're running, which actually may work, but I just feel like you're wasting your time by hitting things on the way out. Um, you know, I think the best method is just to run out, even if you are going to take some damage on the way out. But here we go, we are approaching the southwest room. Which means the ladder should be right here. And it is. So there you go. That is the method I use to get through a Barrows minigame. Um, if you follow these methods, you usually should be able to do pretty well. I mean, obviously there may be a better method or a method that's just as good out there. But um, if you're looking for some sort of method that'll do the job, this is a great way to conduct yourself through the Barrows minigame. Uh, I made about, like I said, over 50 mil doing this. I have drop logs on my channel. And uh, it's just really a fun a fun mini game. I think it's a great way just to pass time while you're bored uh, alone on the game. It's probably the most fun thing you could do alone on the game. Um, it's not really something that's fun to do with friends. I, I, I've tried that before. I've tried hanging out with friends doing Barrows. But it gets really boring because you're constantly just basically playing a solo game separate, you know, while talking to each other. Um, but that is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll do more intricate guides about things like soloing bandos and soloing um, different types of God Wars monsters. But uh, yeah, that is it. I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.